read about other people's meditation experiences. We tend to like to read about the really dramatic ones. People's awareness leaves their body and goes wandering around, sees all kinds of things. Or they discover a sense of oneness with, say, they look outside and they see everything as being beautiful, or they see everything as being just one with them. It sounds very impressive, something we'd like to try too. But you have to look a little further and you realize that when people have those kinds of extreme experiences, those are things that have to be remedied. In other words, they're problems, because some people's minds do tend to go to extremes. And if they have a good meditation teacher, the meditation teacher says, okay, you've got to get over that, you've got to get past that. The weird stuff is not what it's all about. And in connection with this, it's good to remember two things. One, sila, ordinarily translated virtue is one of the requisites for meditation. Sila also means normalcy. You're trying to develop a state of normalcy in your actions where you're not deviating from harmless behavior, you're not going off into extremes of, of harmful behavior, because you're trying to establish a pattern that's going to carry into your meditation. You want to keep the mind in a state of normalcy as well, where it's not going to extremes, where it does have a tendency to Say, so develop a sense of oneness with things outside. Why do you want to do that? In some cases, it's because you want to get a larger sense of self. In other cases, when you want to annihilate yourself, you suddenly become one with the tree. The tree takes over. You become one with the wall. The wall takes over. You want to blot out your experience of who you are and who you've been. That's pushing things too far. Or you have the idea, if you just push a little bit harder, you'll get over the hump and into jhana. These things don't come from pushing. John Fuhr once said, you know, if we could get our way into nirvana by pushing, everybody would push their way in there by now. The mind likes to push and pull. It's much harder to settle into a state of normalcy where there's no pushing or pulling, but that's where you want to go. And remember also that we're here practicing the middle way. Again, we're trying to stay away from extremes of eternalism, when you become one with the universe around you, or annihilation, when you want yourself to be annihilated, say, as a little drop that falls into the ocean, gets totally taken over by the ocean. We're trying to find a place where you can stand in the middle, in a state of normalcy. The mind isn't going up, isn't going down, it's just right here. But it's very solidly right here, very clearly right here. We're looking for the clarity. We're not trying to put ourselves into trances. They have descriptions of trance states largely in the commentaries. But again, those are dangerous things to play with. You get your mind into all kinds of weird situations, weird perceptions, extreme perceptions. And then you've got to get yourself out, because that's not where you're going, or not, at least not where you're going if you're going to go anywhere sane, anywhere safe. So when you catch the mind trying to push itself into an unusual state, pull back. So wait a minute, that's not the middle path. We're not here to push, we're not here to pull, we're here to settle down. And if your mind has a natural tendency to go in those directions, you've got to learn how to remedy it. Or it's simply going there because you want to try something weird and unusual and new in your meditation, you've got to say, wait a minute, wherever you get, you're going to have to pull yourself back, so why bother going? You want to be right here, with a sense of ease, with a sense of normalcy, observing what might be called the, the precepts of the mind. You know, there's the precept against killing, okay, try not to kill this state you've got of just being normal in the present moment. The precept against stealing, trying to steal other people's meditation experiences and make them your own. Precepts against illicit sex, don't try to become one with everything around you. 
precept against lying is don't try to hoodwink yourself into thinking that these states are special. And finally, don't try to intoxicate yourself with a trance state. You want to be normal, clear, because how else are you going to see things? Sometimes you read about in the states of, what do they call insight, stages of insight. You get these weird psychophysical experiences going. Those descriptions are designed by people who are trying to sell a particular kind of meditation. And you're going to go off and spend a week, well, you want to have something to show for it, something you can talk about. You can't talk about, you know, I maintain my mind in a state of normalcy for the entire week. It doesn't impress anybody. But you're not here to impress people. You're not here to impress yourself. You're here to see things clearly. And the best way to see things clearly is to get the mind to a state of stillness. Even the states of John, we tend to think are these very strong trance states. They're the mind in a really normal state, where it's very perceptive, very clearly perceiving things as they are, as they come, as they go, able to see distinctions. That's what we're working on. Trying to keep the mind in a state of normalcy, as with all the elements of the path. There are things that we have already, things that we've tasted already. Simply we haven't seen the strength that they can develop if they're made continuous, if they're made all around. Like this state of normalcy in the mind. If you could really maintain it, it would build up a lot of strength. You develop this sense of the observer and concentration. We're able to just watch things come and go. Like a John Cha's example of the monkey. If you don't really understand monkeys, you become a monkey too when a monkey harasses you or a monkey irritates you. A monkey jumps around, your mind jumps around with a monkey. What we're going to do is stay in a state of normalcy. The monkey jumps, but you don't jump. You know it's jumping, but you're not jumping along with it. And even though this is a fabricated state of stillness and equanimity, still it's part of the path, because the path itself is fabricated. So we're not trying to induce special experiences. Sometimes they will happen, and then the question is, when they happen, what do you do with them? How do you get yourself back to normalcy? But if they're not happening on their own, don't try to induce them. You're trying to develop a state of normalcy where the mind can stay still and calm in the face of what it likes, in the face of what it doesn't like. Because a lot of this tendency to move off into other being, realms of being, or trying to obliterate the distinction between subject and object, there's a strong but subtle sense of aversion that lies under it. Or it can be a strong but subtle sense of passion. It's not the way of the path. These are the things you've got to learn how to see and uproot. So when you find your mind leaning in those directions, remind yourself that this is not the path. You're leaning off to one side or off the other. We're trying to stay on the middle way, right here. And that may not seem very very impressive. But again, we're not here to impress anybody. We're here to see things clearly. And the strength of the path doesn't come from pushing things. It comes from allowing the state of normalcy to get constant. You get here and you just don't budge, don't budge, don't budge. And then in the staying here, the strength develops. So keep this in mind. We're trying to work at a state of normalcy. This is how the practice of the precepts shades into the practice of concentration. And then it shades into discernment, because you see the normal way of the mind. It's normally been creating suffering, but you can see a deeper state of normalcy, a state of true well-being that's very, very solid that comes when you're not creating suffering anymore. So you've got to see the normal habits of the mind that have been creating suffering before you can undo them, let go of them. 
So what we're doing is something very normal. What's unusual about it is that we're trying to maintain this state of normalcy as consistently as we can throughout the day. And that's really extraordinary. It's the consistency that makes it special. <laughs>